Hello and welcome to Adelaide Oval for this India versus South Africa clash in the 1992 World Cup. Well, first of all, the Indian side, captained by uh, Mohammad Azaruddin, and uh, he has a fairly uh, a regular Indian side in there. Vinod Kambli back in the team, but uh, some names we know well from this summer. And then the South African side, well, uh, Kepler Vessels has captained that side particularly well. And uh, we've got to know some of them. Jonty Rhodes, a magnificent fielder. Brian McMillan playing with an injury, but this is uh, desperation time for South Africa. They need the points. And the points table situation, well, we now know that New Zealand are on top of the competition, having beaten England. We've got that sorted out, but South Africa, well, they can claim a spot in the semi-finals with a win today, and that would leave then uh, Australia, West Indies and Pakistan scrambling for a spot in the four. This is a uh, rain-reduced match. It's down to 30 overs. Each bowler has a maximum of six overs, and the field restrictions are in order for the first nine overs. We pick up play in the first over, it's Alan Donald of South Africa bowling to Srikanth. Srikanth on strike to Alan Donald. The outfield will be quite wet and difficult to stand up. The ball will get greasy early on. That's out. Yes, what a catch! What a gem of a catch! It was off the leading edge and he went up. It was a great mark. Peter Kirsten at cover takes a beauty. What a World Cup he's had. Not selected in the initial 20. Here he is making runs galore and affecting catches like this one. I tell you what, he couldn't have got much higher. And uh, he managed to get that in his fingertips. What a catch. Oh, what a start to the 30 over match here at the Adelaide Oval. Looking to work it onto the onside, got the leading edge, out for a duck, it's one for one. Mohammed Azaruddin taking guard, coming in at one for one. He's had a good World Cup, the Indian captain. And the Peter Kirsten, who's um, supporting Johnny Rhodes in the cover region, was coming in with the bowler's arm, and the ball was looking to go on the onside. That made even a better catch to see the stroke there. Looking to work it on the onside, gets the edge, goes adjacent to cover and that's a magnificently judged catch it wasn't going quick but he had to get well off the ground you can only get it with one hand and that's what world cricket is all about superb fielding in the early overs it's a great shot it's four one for eleven Richard Snell coming into the attack from the city end. Can't afford to give uh, Azruddin any room at all on that off stump. He played a brilliant innings in the test match here at uh, Adelaide Oval. It's something like 11 boundaries in his first 50. And uh, he really gave those short side boundaries a workout. Azruddin looks very laid back the way he plays. He doesn't look one of those players that will be Quite keen on running a lot of singles. Times the ball beautifully. As a result, gets a lot of falls. Exactly like that. Yes, this is a superb shot. A very easy laid-back approach. Reminds me a little bit of David Gower. But yeah, Richard Snell just gives him a little bit of width. And he doesn't even have to run for that. He's not going to lose any energy running down the wicket for that one. Oh, but look at John T. Rhodes there. Spectacular. Guess you could never accuse him of not trying, John T. Rhodes. He loves it. That's exactly how he played in the Adelaide Test match. I think, Ian, you've just reminded him how he should probably play on this pitch. Just a little bit of width here, and he's really lapping this up, and he cracks it away, cracks it away square. He doesn't have to run for that either. It's beautifully hit. He's a marvellous timer of the ball, as it would be. And it's going to go all the way. 
Ezra Din in very aggressive form at the moment, really attacking the bowlers. He not many singles in this innings. And here, Richard Snell, who he's taking a fancy to here, just on off stump, and he just clips it through the mid wicket gap and runs all the way for four. And what fine timing that is. There's a long off. This Brian McMillan will probably have to bowl this spell of six overs all in one shot because it doesn't look as though he can he'll be able to come back because there's no doubt his Achilles will have stiffened up after this spell. Good over from McMillan. India won for 58 after 12. McMillan getting that ball to really nip back. And I'm sure he'd be delighted to see the balls just moving around for him. Ezra didn't not so happy about it. There you see the ball really seem back on him and hit him on the inside of the thigh. I'm sure he didn't appreciate that too much. Israel, you can see, just working off that bruise as he's running down the wicket. Yes, there'll be some exciting uh, batting from here on in. Down the ground. And the long off is not straight enough. In fact, the ball going directly behind the bowler's head. Just the one run for it. That was pretty close for Mandraker up the other end there, wasn't it? He, if, he, if he hadn't had his wits about him and the ball hit the stumps, you have a look at the ball at the, uh, the keeper's end as we go through here. The ball is missed at the bowler's end and Mandraker at the other end thought, hang on, very close, wasn't it? Protection out there, but they'll look for two. Sweep of position. Man out there having to move to his right. So two more runs. And the fact that the Indians are keeping wickets intact here. They've just lost the one. Chris Shrikan out without scoring. That's the second consecutive match he's been out without scoring. Adrian Kaper. It's in the air. There's a high catch out there. But dropping just short of Cronje out on the wide long on position. Well, we're going to see a few of these up and under shots. Players going for the short boundary square of the of the wicket. The batsman didn't quite get hold of that, and probably luckily he didn't. Didn't quite reach. He's bowled him, so Mandrake swinging once too often. Adrian Kaper gets the wicket. And the second wicket is gone for India. Mandrake, having decided, oh, about two overs ago, that the time had come for some big hitting. Bowled by Kaper for 28, one for 79. Yes, uh, it's the way he had to go, Mandrake, but uh, some very smart bowling from Kaper. Just keeping the ball up, a little bit of movement off the seam there. He's gone 28 from 53 deliveries. It's two for 79. So here is the star boy of world cricket. Sachin Tendulkar is out there now to replace Mandraker. Down the ground. And there certainly will be two here. Of course, it's not only that he's uh, been batting so well, and it's a batsman that everyone knows uh, Sachin Tendulkar already as. But he's also filled in as a medium pace bowler and he's been absolutely outstanding in the field. It's a glorious day now. And that's a magnificent hit. That's, uh, that's something like, uh, what, 130, 120, 130 meters way out there. And didn't he time that well? 
He's now warming up. Two for 100. And it's going to be a catch. Lobbed up, taken quite comfortably by Vessels at mid-on. That's an important wicket for South Africa as Tindoka completely mistiming the shot. So the third Indian wicket falls, 103, and Sachin Tindoka goes off a ground in Australia for the last time for the season. Yes, he didn't quite get hollered. You, you could see his grimace there just as he hit it. He knew he was gone. Tried to go over the top of Vessels, I think. There was a gap out there, and this is good captaincy. You encourage, as I said, the players to hit across the line. That was pitched outside off stump. And Kessel's, uh, Vessels takes a, a very well-judged catch. So Tindilka caught by Wetler Kessels. mid on off the bowling of Caper. And uh, it's a three for 103. Out there at the moment, a couple of dev. It's Mohammed Azrid in 50. He's played very well. Placement has been absolutely superb. Doesn't really try to strike the ball too hard. His timing has been immaculate. That's the end of the over. Three for 112. Put that one away fine as well. So that'll run all the way down to the fence. Caper just straying in line this time, hanging the ball down the leg side. And as long leg was very wide, covering the shorter square boundary, that ball able to run very fine down to the boundary for four. Just enough bat on that to give it the impetus, give it a necessary momentum to carry all the way. It's a long boundary down there, but still four. He's hit that beautifully, right off the meat again. The mid on's up, it's bounced. Uh, just 15 metres away or thereabout from the boundary, but once again right off the middle of the bat. This is turning out to be a little gem of an innings. Mazda did, that's his sixth boundary. This is exactly where the batsmen have been eyeing up space. Mid on in. And a full ball from Richard Snell being given plenty of treatment from uh, Azaruddin. A few bounces and a roll. And that's four more runs. So the end of the over, three for 145. This is Alan Donald. That goes flying away down the leg side. Reflect him on the boot. Perhaps he got a bit of bat on it as well. Well, it would have been a great diving catch if Dave Richardson had hung on to this one. The ball was angled down the leg side already from Alan Donald. Azruddin just helped it on a bit further. You see Richardson going a long, long way to his left, punching it out. Unable to hold it in the gloves. Necessary overthrows there. As Rodin was very comfortably in. And just tempted our man to let the ball go. And no backing up as extra cover and mid-off were well out of position to, to stop the extra run coming. Nice deflection. 
One more to third man. I hope he did quietly accumulate the ones. And 50 registered on the board. Very well bowled, right up in the block hole, but uh, Azradin's quick, he's coming back for the second, did he make it? Uh, yes, he's a made it, just though. Well, they're running for everything, India, they have to, it's uh, the latest stages of a, a shortened game. There's no point in holding back here, they've got lent lots of batsmen left in the pavilion. And very close at full speed, that uh, Kizar Hayek giving the batsmen the benefit of the doubt. We have the advantage of slow motion replays here. That one's gone way down the water square leg. In the defence, it goes too. This, of course, is the risk when the field is spread and when long leg is up. That any loose delivery like that, this was high and aimed towards leg stump. Dragged, in fact, sorry, from just outside off stump. And there's plenty of open space there. The Indians were put into bat by South Africa. In this, a reduced match. This is over number 29. Donald the bowler, and that's a big hit. Yes, it's a beauty. Way over the top, just behind square. Those boundaries are just a little short there, but really, he middled that one. It was a pretty flat pull shot as well. And ended up flying onto the concrete section up at the back of the ground. This is more of a scoop from Kapildev. Again, Alan Donald straying in line down the leg side. The man at deep square leg, three rows back in the crowd there, not making a very good effort, I'm afraid. Always hit that beautifully as well. Absolutely magnificent batting here by the Indians. That was marvellous timing by Dev. Having said that, just short of a length. This is the place that batsmen like Dev and Mohammed Azra didn't like it. Kapil Dev's done very well to squeeze this out for four. It's full length. He stayed on the crease there, Kapil Dev. And he's just timed this one so perfectly and placed it so well. But it's raced away for four. His strike rate at 150 at the moment. And he's bowled him. That one's hit the stump and gone flying over the top of the keeper's head. What a gem of a little knock, though, from Kapil Dev. I don't think the South Africans will forget that in a hurry. He came in and, from the word go, turned it on and played superbly. Kapil Dev there, 42, bowled by Alan Donald. That was exactly what he was asked to do by his captain. This time, Donald dropping a little shorter. Kapildev trying to repeat the shot of the first ball of the over, which went for six. Beaten by pace. A little bit of lack of bounce. And the bales are flying. And Kapildev is out for 42. 29 balls it took him. India are four for 174. Kambli, Vinu Kambli is the new batsman. Started today at uh, 115. It was uh, reduced to a 30 over match. As that one comes in over the bales, Cambly is run out. So, nice bit of feeling there. The uh, Keller Vessels actually dived to try and catch this ball. Ball bounced out of his hands, but a, a good recovery. And as uh, Cambly comes back for the two, essentially in the last over of the game here, they had to run for everything. He's not back in time, beaten by Vessel's underarm throw. Not much uh, joy for Vino Cambly, but it does leave Mo Azruddin still on strike, and he, of course, is the main Indian batsman here today. 77 not out. Is it that one straight down the ground? Back for the second, and oh. That is a huge dive down the run strikers in. Dramatic stuff here from Pravin Amre. The Indians, as I say, got to run for everything now in this last over. 
It's a long way out to long off there, and his one mission once, he, once the runner had been called for was to set off as quickly as possible and make sure it's a desperate dive, but it does make sure he's in. Merrick Pringle can't, can't believe what he's seeing. So as it ends, hits down the ground, this could be out, there's a man underneath him, it's a long way down there, yes he's out, and that's the end of a fabulous innings by Mohamed Azuddin. He really has played superbly, he's hit the ball in the air, all over the place, played some magnificent ground shots as well. And that one unfortunately played to the long boundary in the air, and it's the end of what has been a marvellous innings to watch. Azdur didn't hit this very sweetly. But when you've got such a long distance to carry, it's very hard to beat the man. Adrian Caper, the catcher, got underneath it in perfect position. It's the end of Azrudin's very fine knock of 79. So for Gold Shrinat is the new batsman. So just one ball to go. In this, the last over of the 30th. Emre's on strike. One run for that one, so the score moves on to six down to 100 miles. Well, some marvellous batting there, particularly from the captain. He loves this Adelaide Oval, Mohamed Azaruddin. A test century here and a magnificent innings today against South Africa. He really did uh, place the ball beautifully, hit some marvellous boundaries. 79 coming off just 77 balls and a terrific partnership uh, with uh, Kapil Dev, a former Indian captain. 42 from just 29 balls and that's a good performance. 30 overs and they averaged exactly six runs per over. Six for 180 and as always happens in a shortened match the bowlers uh, get a little bit of stick. Alan Donald two for 34 from his six. Merrick Pringle one for 37 and Adrian Caper two for 28. He's been a useful bowler for South Africa in the competition. So it's a chase now for two points. Two points which would get South Africa into a semi-final berth in this World Cup. We pick up play, the score is on one and it's Kapil Dev bowling to Peter Kirsten. That's through, that will go all the way. It's Kapil Dev can't afford to give Kirsten any width here. The short boundary that is square of the wicket at this Adelaide Oval. Makes it a lot easier for the batsman to get boundaries in here. Kirsten really cracks it through the gap. And despairing dive there. But no chance, four runs. And Kirsten's got off to a very confident start. Well struck. And Dukas going hard. Dives, almost a fingertipper there. Didn't quite get there. He was running the way. Way Tenduki ran with the ball. He's a fine young athlete. Didn't quite make it. That's the over bowl. No wicket for 19. Yes, here Andrew Hudson looking to go over the top. Hits it and Tenduka after this one. Very confident that he's going to get it. Diving with outstretched hands. Thinking he's going to get it. And just, just past his fingertips. Oh, that was extremely close. But what a good effort. Got a run, so be very close. Oh, brilliant running. And Smart was through quickly. A red by. Peter Kirsten and Srinath, both very quick. And Srinath here, having delivered the ball, follows through. Just dropped down two, three yards in front of the wicket. And had he gathered it, that would have been very close. He's really got onto that one, put it away. Srinath, being expensive here, he's been a, something of a disappointment to the Indians in the World Cup. And not inconsistent and here too short. Andrew Hudson had actually missed three or four attempted pulls before this one, but this time he's latched onto it very firmly indeed. He did up, high over the mid-wicket, and one bounce into the crowd. Well, we have Raju, the left-arm spinner, who has bowled well for India in the World Cup. He's coming on now. all very well and he's beaten the fielder out at deep cover a despairing and not very effective dive four more to Kirsten beautifully timed shot through the covers Ravi Namre the man 
diving without due care and attention. That's a good bit of fielding. It must have been close. The Indians are very excited about it. Superb bit of work by Tendoka. Very enthusiastic with the field of this man. South Africa, none for 77. Well, most bowlers don't like to concede runs, if they can possibly help it, and diving stop there. Very athletic. Here it is again. Very quickly, very quickly gets the ball back into play there. You can see there, there's a little gap between the bat and the crease. And Hudson is after him again. That's a big one. The long on is not far enough back. And it goes first bounce into the boundary. So Hudson after Raju for the second time and getting a boundary deep into the leg side field. Again, Hudson taking the long handle to the left arm spinner. And the, the problem, of course, for the skipper of the Indian side is to position his field is exactly right. And it's a long, long way out at long, in, at long on. And the ball this time clearing the man. It really has to be a mixture of taking all the singles available. And uh, that's very well played. Peter Kirsten has made 50. Yes, it has been a very uh, good knock and an intelligent knock, and that's what's been impressive about this start by South Africa. Two here as well. So 50 to Hudson. That's well played by him too. three now to get off 41 balls hold him while well, he's trying to get away and push that one away through the offside field and while they've managed to manipulate the bowlers pushing them on the onside on the on and on the offside so often in this uh, marvelous partnership on that occasion he tried to play a dead straight ball, swoop square, and this will happen. The perfect Yorker there from Srinath. He's taken a bit of stick, but uh, gets a little bit of revenge there as he gets rid of Andrew Hudson. South Africa, one for 128. Adrian Caper, the new batsman, 32 years of age. And he's got a top score of 63. Put that one away on the onside. Settling for one. So Caper off the mark. Yes, that'll be Caper's uh, Caper for the start of his innings. Get singles and give the strike to Kirsten, who's the man who's been out there for a while. Caper just new at the crease, having uh, come in at the fall of Andrew Hudson's wicket. Prabhaka certainly uh, takes a lot of care over his field placings. Got that one away square towards that boundary. It needs a bit of protecting. It's protected a right back to come for the second. Do not Cambly, the man there behind the mask. Got a bit of sun cream on. Desi, they call him, because his uh, favourite cricketer is Desmond Haynes of the West Indies. A beautiful shot. Straight down the ground, and that's going to go for four. There's six off the first two balls, and now uh, that allows Kirsten the luxury of just pushing the ball around without a lot of risk. And he can probably pick up 
the well a number of bonuses in this over when you're looking at seven runs per over but the important thing is that he can pick up the bonuses without risk and if Kirsten is still there at the end it's going to be fairly comfortable for South Africa some part gives a high heart enjoyed signaling four there and no ball there This is a great, uh, great over for South Africa. No ball called there. So they've got uh, eight runs and uh, two legal deliveries. So that's a real bonus. So 40 runs needed now of just the remaining 30 balls. Nine wickets in hand. So Azaruddin has decided to finish with Srinath's overs now. So he's going to bowl his sixth. And a big appeal there for LBW. That must have been quite close. And has he got home? Yes, he has. Well, with that too, they've got up to their seven per over again. Got up to the quota. And they've done it on this occasion with three twos and a single. Big appeal there for LBW, and he's run out. Well, Kirsten went for that one. A big appeal for LBW. Good work there by Srinath. He fired through very well indeed. And uh, Kirsten has once more run out one of his partners. This is how it happened. Tell you what, Pick is a bit unlucky because if that wasn't Plum LBW, I haven't seen Plum LBW. And uh, I think, actually, that Kirsten felt that he was LBW. That's the only reason he was running. And poor old Capers uh, paid the price. South Africa, two for 149. Jonty Rhodes, the new batsman. Kirsten, however, has the strike as a result of that run out. That's going to be four. That's a magnificent shot. Giving himself some room on the onside. Couple of pitching up. It straight through the line, Peter Kirst, and that's four over cover. What a glorious shot. You might think that uh, eight per over for the last four overs is a, big, is a big ask, but look at that for a magnificent cover drive. Just gave him a bit, a bit, of, gave him a bit of room, got it on the up. Got him, that's a vital wicket. Peter Kirsten's bold. Capital Dev with the experience keeping the ball up. A fine innings from Peter Kirsten, but that's a blow for South Africa. Well, how good is this man, Capital Dev? Kirsten was giving himself room to hit him through the offside to those shorter boundaries. And look at this. Full pitched on off stump. Yorker length. Brilliant bowling. At the end of a fine innings. 84 of 85 balls face. Three for 157. South African captain kept all vessels. Big moment for him. If they win this match, they're into the semi finals of the World Cup. Oh, he swings it away. It could be six. Junky Rhodes into the action over the square leg. I was just going to say the, the deep fieldsmen have been brought in just a little bit closer because these guys uh, don't hit the ball quite as cleanly, quite as far, and he's hit it out of the ground. Nice. No, that was six, surely. I thought that went over. We'll have a look at that replay. We're looking into the sun, but that looked like it was as if it was going all the way to me. He put the bat. Oh, that's six for sure. Guys must confer here. It certainly went all the way. There was no The fieldsman would have seen that that went over the fence. There's no doubt about that. That was a clear hit. As we've been coming in, quite rightly, he's inquired, likely to ask, but the fieldsman must have seen that go over the fence. The fielder out there has just signaled six. <laughs> You'd be a bit angry, wouldn't you? You've hit it over the, over the fence by about uh, 15 metres and called four. Now it's six. Very dramatic. Very dramatic decision. Walk into position. Fielders Bulton's not panicking under pressure. Got the television camera zoomed in and singled. Set six. Gone. Well, there you go. 
six and out. Cut it straight to the man at point. Jonty Rhodes out for seven. This is the beauty of having wickets in hand, isn't it, when you're chasing runs with a few overs to go. Very, very well bowled here by uh, Prabhaka. The slower ball. Have a look at this. Catches it on the rise. Hit it pretty well. But straight to the field. Four for 163, South Africa. Kenzie Cronier comes to the crease. Well, Kepler not noted for his big hitting, but uh, if you drop fractionally short to him, whether outside the off stump or off his pads, he's very, very good square of the wicket. So Prabhaka will be aiming for the base of the stumps. There's no doubt about that. There'll be no room at all. Close. Oh, well, that was close to coming back for the second. Oh, he didn't pick it up. Dear, oh dear, the Seagulls, the ball was lost in the Seagulls. There was a chance for a run out of misfield, the pressure showing. Look at Azra in hands on hips, very angry. Very, very lucky uh, for Azra in there that were, there weren't three run. There was a bit of a mix up. Ponsi Cronia, he figured that the ball had been picked up cleanly. That's pitched outside leg, so that can't be out. Look at Hansi Kronje there. He uh, he thought it had been picked up cleanly. Probably even mixed that extra, <laughs> missed that extra run. It's well struck. They should look for two. So now he's had a rugged day in the field. Fires it back at Kappa there. There's always two there. Yes, and they, they probably uh, have picked him out down there. He's had a horror day in the field. Poor old Javagal uh, Srinath. He's had a fit of the fumbles. But I really do think that there was two to any fielder here. He could need eight off the final over, and then it'll be very, very close, getting too close for comfort with six wickets in hand. Wouldn't only be tension out there in the crowd. You'd think of the bowlers coming in to bowl these last seven deliveries. Kapil Dev is, on his, uh, is uh, about to bowl his last ball. He wouldn't want to bowl a wide or a no ball. It's well struck. It's well placed as well. It's going all the way. Four runs. So that takes the pressure up for the final over. What a fantastic shot from Kepler Vessels. Pick the gap. Exactly what South Africa needed. Yes, the South African captain facing Kepler's last ball. He went to the York, was just, just drifted to off stump, and he not only did he time it well, but he beat the man at cover on the fence. And that's a very valuable four runs so if they're good enough now and they seem to be South Africa should win this match but you never know the pressure's for, on for the final six deliveries and Spabaka to bowl them and uh, what a wonderful effort it will be Bruce if South Africa do make the semi-finals oh marvellous I saw them play their first game here in Australia in Perth on a, a damp sort of a pitch they just lost that game but it was a very strong West Australian team and I, I figured after that match they'd give a lot of cheek in this World Cup and also, um, as we've been reacting here, bringing all the fieldsmen almost inside the circle, just one man of cover just outside. So they try and hit over the top, probably. He's got it. There it goes. One bounce over the fence. So South Africa into the finals of the World Cup for 92. A magnificent effort chasing the four for 181. Well, it's been a triumphant return to international cricket for South Africa. They've gained a spot in the semi-finals thanks to an innings, uh, a magnificent innings, an intelligent cricketing innings from Peter Kirsten, 84. And uh, he got those runs off just 85 balls. A marvellous opening partnership, 128 coming off 144 balls between Andrew Hudson and Peter Kirsten. That set up the South African victory and it was completed there. A boundary to Kepler Vessels took them to within four runs of victory. And then Hansi Cronier with the first ball of the last over, belting a boundary and South Africa were into the semi-finals with 10 points. Four for 181 of 29.1 deliveries. For India, 
Kapil Dev and Prabhaka opening the bowling there. One for 36 to Kapil Dev, one for 33 to Prabhaka, and Sachin Tendulkar, a very tidy spell from him, but Srinath and Raju took a bit of stick from their six overs. So South Africa, by claiming victory there, move into the semi-finals. And the crunch of falling wickets.